646-751-6868. And stay tuned now for Ike Engelbaum. He's going to have some wonderful information and guests for you. And uh, he's always interesting. Have yourself a wonderful day. Thank you for sharing the morning. I'm Bob Allison. Rob and I will see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. You're listening to WNZK, Dearborn Heights, Detroit. Your ethnic superstation, 690 days, 680 nights. WNZK has available a few good hours of airtime for a few good programs to serve their communities. Radio is better than ever in targeting an audience that listens to what you say. Learn more about this exciting radio broadcasting opportunity by calling WNZK Radio at 248-557-3500. Welcome to the Bright Side of Aging. My name is Ike Engelbaum. I'm a pharmacist and the publisher of AmericanSeniorGazette.org. It has been wisely said, you cannot help getting older, but you can help getting old. It has also been said that age is a matter of the mind. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. My purpose in doing the show is so that seniors and caregivers can share their ideas and questions on how we can age gracefully and in a vertical position for as long as our good genes will allow. And if we've inherited bad genes, how to outwit them. Our topics include senior housing, financial, legal, safety, travel, health issues, interesting senior events in the community, and most of all, tips on how to put old on hold. If you are diabetic, I am sure you have been warned by your doctor about the circulation problems that may occur, especially in your legs and your feet. That is why Medicare still pays for a free new pair of shoes if you're diabetic. And also, there's a system called neuropathy that may settle in that can be treated by a non-invasive system best described as the anodyne therapy. Call 1-888-489-8980 and find out how your leg circulation could be possibly improved by the anodyne therapy. Anodyne therapy is a non-invasive way of producing warmth in your legs and is applied by a professional and in, in the convenience of your home or a nearby office. That's 1-888-489-8980. And if you'd like a free brochure on how Medicare can help you as a diabetic patient, Many services are available for free. Call 1-888-489-8980. Do you know someone who needs to see a dentist but is homebound? Dr. Mansour's Portable Dental Services provides dental treatment in the comfort of a person's home. Portable Dental Services administers all aspects of dental care. To make an appointment, call 586-873-5567. That's Portable Dental Services, 586 586- 873-5567. Portable Dental Services, making smiles at home. And welcome, and hopefully your day is off to a running start, or at least a walking start. There may be a crawling part there, uh, whatever it is, <laughs> as long as you're moving. The show is titled Bright Side of Aging, and is intended to motivate you to keep on moving. As they say, move it or lose it, and hopefully you don't lose it, and uh, you enjoy this great weather we are having. It is indeed just a delight to be able to see the sun and trees and all kinds of good stuff, and hopefully you got good stuff uh, that you can enjoy. I'm really excited about talking about enjoying uh, different things that go on in Michigan, as you know, the Renaissance Festival starts mid-August and goes all the way to mid-October on the weekends. And have I got a deal for you. 
as you know, Bob Allison that precedes the show has been doing Ask Your Neighbor for over 50 years, and he uh, also is a Rotarian uh, for that long, if not longer. And he's going to be honored on August the 20th at the uh, Max Fisher uh, Building. If you are interested in joining me and uh, Al O'Neill, his sales manager, and Maggie, his wife, and just have a real great time, from 3 to 6 p.m., they got refreshments and also the opportunity to mingle with people that listen to this show and a lot of Rotarians from around the state. Bob uh, Allison is sort of a legend, uh, not only in his own mind, <laughs> as I introduce myself, but he's a legend in a lot of people's minds. He uh, used to be Milky the Clown, and he was also involved with bowling for dollars. Well, on, uh, on August 20th, Sunday, 3 to 6, come on down, and you'll hear him play the piano. He's a jazz pianist, and it should be a real fun day. If you indeed want to join... Uh, you can call me at uh, my cell phone, 313-929-6105, or that safety net number, 888-489-8980, that I repeat frequently. And if you indeed want to join us for 50 bucks, we can make arrangements to get you two free tickets to the Renaissance Festival. The tickets Renaissance Festival sell for twenty-two ninety-five each. So if you do the math, that's like forty-six bucks that you're getting for a great event, and it's only costing you four dollars, and you're getting food, uh, food and entertainment. Is that a deal or is that a deal? <laughs> so please join us, and uh, I'm hoping to have our next guest. Come back to Michigan. Dr. Andre Lee is a former Michiganian. He is now uh, out there a Tennessean. And Dr. Andre Lee is really a phenomenal, talented person. Uh, he uh, was the uh, executive director of Highland Park General Hospital. And uh, when they closed up, he decided he would do what... A positive-minded senior should do. At that time, he wasn't a senior. He's been around for a while. And he started Leeway Foundation, which is devoted to honoring famous black heroes, first uh, people uh, in the military that were black, and also uh, doing health uh, history uh, lessons, and uh, also does portraits. He is just an all-around talented guy, and I enjoy his weekly visits where we discuss what he is doing, and he's doing a lot of stuff. So, Dr. Andre Lee from Tennessee, hello. <laughs> yes, sir. Good, good, good to talk to you, sir. Right. Yeah, well, I, you know, I missed that New Science Festival. I love that going to that. Uh, they oh well I wonder well listen we got to, you got till mid October and I'll get you some free tickets how's that yeah cookie <laughs> legs and all kinds of stuff man it's, it's, I tell people how to go it's really a, a nice experience yeah well thank you very much sir and uh, we uh, usually discuss uh, your activities and try to convey some health tips so what's on your mind today Dr Andre Lee <laughs> well. I I want to keep talking about uh, the church newsletter that we're putting out that is not only going to talk about health, but about uh, uh, other other things that uh, people might find of interest, uh, how to increase your security, how to protect your credit cards, all, you know, that type of cybersecurity, how to use the Internet, to, you know, a lot of different webinars and tips and suggestions to make life better uh, and, and uh that's coming out, and, and in fact, I just got a list, and a group of churches. I've got about 50 churches just signing up. Uh, I got the email yesterday, uh, and so I'm just excited because uh, that, that's my first handful of it, and I've got more coming. Ah. So this is, this is looking, looking really, really nice. And so people, all, all I need is the church email address. Mm. And we will send out a digital newsletter every other week 
uh, to that email address, and the church can distribute it anywhere where they want. They can print out the newsletter, or they can just forward it through their congregation's email addresses. So it's a very simple process. And the good part is that we're going to have tips in it from time to time on how to fundraise for the church. Hmm. Uh, like you just talked about the exhibit that I have, uh, you know, and, and, and right now my exhibit is being in, 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 in three or four different places right now, and more. I've got four exhibits, and and uh, three of them are not in, in, in use right now, but they will be because people don't do much during the summer. But uh, I think it's going to start picking up here very shortly. Hmm. So it's going to be good things to people at the church that wants to raise money. Uh, and uh, the, the wonderful part about the newsletter is that churches have items that they want to sell to raise money. It goes to other churches. So you're not just selling it to your own congregation. You're going to have an audience that goes well beyond your congregation. So churches that are interested in participating and, and so forth, this is, a, this is a wonderful, wonderful vehicle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, uh, any uh, church locally that's interested, uh, please call our toll-free number, 888-489-8980. That's 888-489-8980. And I'll be uh, glad to coordinate having your own newsletter for your church, and uh, we can uh, help you uh, get sponsors and a portion of the proceeds would go to the church. So you're conveying good information. Exactly. And, and at the same time, the church can uh, hopefully pay their bills, <laughs> if not all of them, at least a good part of them. And to me, I have always felt that uh, there's three ways that uh, any organization uh, can uh, raise money. Uh, I call uh, I call it the PI formula. P I E. Uh, okay. Pi, pi, the P stands for plead, where you're begging for money. <laughs> I uh -huh. I is where you involve the uh, other members of the congregation or, or sponsors, and uh, E is earn. You earn the income. <laughs> right, and what right, is wrong right. with that formula? And any church, or in fact, uh, we're talking to the uh, Boy Scouts about using the newsletter in their format. That's the wonderful and exciting thing about technology today. You can get in mass the message out almost instantly, and there's no busy work with the paper and the what have you, and the uh, confidence of the confidentiality, I should say, of the members is strictly with the church. All we need is someone that's interested, and we can get it going. Uh, before well, we, if, if, yeah, that's uh, right. And if and if a church is uh, interested in promoting some event they're having. Uh, some anniversary event, so on. This is a wonderful thing to share with other churches. Right. I mean, you can use the newsletter to do that. And if there are any businesses listening that want to reach out to a congregation, or and most of them do, then why not take out an ad in the newsletter? Right. It's, it's, it, it, there's a lot of synergy here, and, and uh, all it takes is a yes. Yes, right. Well, you do, and, yeah, and we're looking for some yeses. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. That's, that's before, perfect, perfect. before we part company, just wondered, do you have a health tip for today, or do you want to save it for next yeah, time? Yeah, I, I, in fact, I had a, a long conversation with some people yesterday about billing. Uh, people are getting a lot of medical bills that they don't understand. Some people take an aggravator and just throw them away. Uh, but if you've ever gotten a bill and, and the charges seem ex extremely high or incorrect, that, that's the time to take that bill. Now, usually what happens on those bills is at least one 800 number on there. Uh, I got a bill the other day that had three 800 numbers on one sheet of paper. Hi. And, uh, you know, one was in Michigan, one was in Arizona, and one was in Tennessee. <laughs> and I called all three, and nobody knew what the bill was for. You know, oh, I mean, wow. it was amazing. But the point is, is, it can get to be very complicated and frustrating. To, I mean, I'm very meticulous. I write the names, time, and dates down. Now, that's the first thing you do when you call. Mm -hmm. Always write the name, time, and date, and who you talk to. Because they're recording you. And then the second thing to do 
Just don't get frustrated. It's going to take time. First of all, you got to get past the automatic answering system. And then you got to yeah. get past two or three people that pick up and say, I don't know. Yes. I'll forward you on to somebody else. Yes. It takes time. But if you get frustrated and you just can't resolve it to your satisfaction, there are some companies out there called Medical Billing Advocates. Mm-hmm. Uh, and these are small industry companies. In fact, they're, they're usually individuals at home who have medical billing experience and who decide to become self-employed entrepreneurs who will take your bill, scrutinize it, analyze it, and find errors in that bill on your behalf and work with you to go to that provider, that institution or person, uh, practitioner, and negotiate a settlement on that bill. Mm-hmm. Now, the way they charge, some of them charge a flat fee, some of them charge a percentage of whatever it is, the savings that they achieve for you. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, uh, you know, and, and like I said, this could be a very complicated process, but with, that would be my recommendation. Right. And that's the kind of tips we will throw in the newsletter, folks. Right. Well, that's why I urge you to get your church to sign up. Well, uh, again, uh, they, if they're interested, it just so happens that I do work with a couple of those companies. <laughs> and in fact, uh, as you know, I head up the Entrepreneurs Network of Michigan, and a couple of our members, that's their day job, that if wow. uh, they work on a percentage of savings or, like you described, uh-huh. uh, a uh, bite-sized piece, and you only pay them if you get if the you results. Do, if they want. Right. Exactly. And, you know, uh, before we part company, as you know, uh, uh, I have a series of icisms, as I call them. Oh, and, uh, oh. Okay, and uh, one of them that I quote often is that the next best thing to knowing the right answer is knowing to ask the right question. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so if you get, uh, well, if you if you if you get someone who knows what they're doing, like a medical billing expert, they know how to ask the questions on your behalf. They ask the right questions. All right, right. Dr. Lee is always the time fly. Eyes by, and hopefully we'll talk again next week with some more words of wisdom and health tips. Go. Have a great day, and we'll talk again next week. Right now, we'll take a brief break, and we're going to have some really exciting information conveyed. And the first time in my career, I've been doing these shows for over 45 years, I'm going to have two dynamic guests. A grandfather and a grandson. Wow! Don't you dare go away. We'll be right back. (laughs) If your question is, who am I going to call to bring the kind of services into my home that I need because I can't get out? House Calls on Wheels provides both medical and non-medical services in your home. They can bring in doctors, dentists, nurses, therapists, and more. And those medical services are covered by Medicare and most private insurance plans. And they have all sorts of non-medical services, whatever you need. Now, if you use four hours or more of non-medical services per month, you're going to get a free personal emergency button telephone that you can use for both emergencies or daily use. Call House Calls on Wheels toll-free for further information. one 489 8980 That's one 489 Do you know someone who needs to see a dentist but is homebound? Dr. Mansour's Portable Dental Services provides dental treatment in the comfort of a person's home. Portable Dental Services administers all aspects of dental care. To make an appointment, call 586-873-5567. That's Portable Dental Services, 586-873-5567. Portable Dental Services, making smiles at home. And as promised, in studio I have Larry Lawson, who's a retired radiologist. He works uh, actually still 
does some gigs. Uh, do you and that, Larry, with uh, Dick Burton? Well, uh, we do the Salvation Army so, Radiothon. Right? That's called working together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, with uh, my good friend Al Muscovitz, Big oh, Al from big, the Dick Burton. Yeah, Remember right. him, of oh, course. Yeah, he, he's, he's fantastic. I, uh, the, uh, he's threatened to come on the air a few times with me. Yes. <laughs> but it's only a threat. Uh, uh, I'll uh, bring him down. <laughs> yeah. So it's we gonna, filled you're, in. You're going to need two people to bring Big Al. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and uh, you worked with Dick uh, Burton for 43 years. Right. And you're a writer and voice person. Uh, and with some of these guys, what was it? Wendell Ledbetter, the story lady, voice of the Crapco? <laughs> the Crapco Christmas Cattle. Yeah. I have some examples of all of this at some yeah, point. Unfortu <laughs> unfortunately, uh, on radio, it's hard for them to see it over the microphone. <laughs> yep, yep. Well, we got, I, I have some things here if you want to want to hear them, yeah, but okay, uh, we good. may be yeah, running well, out of yeah, time. No, no, that's all right. We got, and, we, uh, we got some time. I, yeah. uh, I just want to make sure that I uh, also convey that... Uh, You've been filling in for Mitch Album uh, with Big Al, and uh, you've authored uh, a self-published book entitled Pizza with Everything. That's correct. And uh, we're going to be uh, getting a little bit of your background. Uh, and what I am really excited about is uh, that you brought along a dynamic young grandson, Eitan Sher. And uh, we're going to share some thoughts with him. And uh, as I understand it, Eitan, you're about to turn 15 years old. Yeah. And you're entering as a sophomore in your sophomore year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And uh, what's uh, really uh, a joy for me is that uh, I always enjoy reading books where there's pictures and stuff. And here you are. You were a talented cartoonist. Thank and you. Uh, you are also uh, obviously got some genes from your grandson, cause, or your grandfather, I should say, that uh, you're going to be uh, hopefully writing some stuff as well. And you play the guitar, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to be plunking away. Yeah. Well, since, uh, Itan, you uh, are into cartoons, uh, who is your favorite cartoonist? Um, that's really hard to pick. Mm -hmm. Probably one of the cartoonists from old Mad Magazine, mm -hmm. so Sergio Aragones. Mm -hmm. He um, has been working at Mad for, I think, since the 1950s. Mm. I really like all that old stuff. I'm just curious, uh, how did you suddenly come to the realization that, hey, I can draw this stuff? Well, what happened? <laughs> um, I've been able to do it ever since I was really young. Uh -huh. And... Uh, it's really fun. I yeah. have also been really uh, writing stories a lot too. So if I can draw and also write stories, I, you know, have combined the talents and done a lot of co comic strips, which I really enjoy doing. And I think I'm pretty good at it. So I want to pursue a career in that someday. I see. Well, unfortunately, the folks can't see it. Maybe we'll have you on our TV show, and we can show it on the screen because. They look terrific. Is there any particular theme that you try to bring out? Or is it, how do you suddenly say, hey, I want to do a cartoon out of this? Um, not a theme, per se. Usually it comes from things that I experience in real life. So if something funny happens, I'll turn it into a cartoon. Mm -hmm. That happens a lot. So, um, I don't get a lot of ideas by just sitting and staring at a blank page. Uh -huh. That's kind of impossible, in my opinion. I see. Well, it, uh, everyone's got their uh, style, that's for darn sure. I just wondered uh, as to uh, whether you can share, is there one that pops up your, uh, in your mind? Which, which cartoon do you feel that, hey, this is my work? <laughs> um, there's one I have with me right now. I thought it was pretty funny. It's a man in the middle of the desert, uh -huh. and he's crawled up to a food stand in the middle of the desert and he has a long beard and ragged clothes and he says do you have anything gluten-free <laughs> <laughs> so hey we could post that in the health food store <laughs> yeah definitely uh, larry lawson you're you're the ultimate marketer how about well, that <laughs> well i have to see you're talking about genes and i there's an there's the other side of the of the gene pool his father is a screenwriter 
oh, Dan wow. Shear, oh, and wow. he's written uh, uh, some very humorous movies, and probably the biggest is Epic, wow. uh, mm-hmm. which was not exactly a comedy. It's more of an adventure. It was an animated film. Yeah. Animated, yeah. Came out wow. 2013. Yeah. So, so uh, Akon is terrific in his own right, but uh, uh, yeah. uh, mentioned genes. Yeah, there's yeah, a little no, there, both sides. Uh, yeah, you know. no, there is, there's something there. And uh, unfortunately, uh, they're really uh, creative. Uh, so uh, then uh, if you considered possibly uh, doing uh, an ongoing series in the newspapers, is that, what is your goal with the cartoons? Um, I would really love to do that. Unfortunately, uh, as time goes by, it's harder to... Uh, get comics in the paper because that's not um you know newspapers are kind of dying a little bit right. as time goes on and a lot of people are doing comics on the internet web comics right. which is probably what i'm going to try to do for a uh, career uh, which is very different but it's still fun you have your own um you can edit yourself you yes. can decide when what comics you like instead yes. of someone else Yes, well, you know, with the e- e- these email newsletters and what have you, there's got to be a market there that uh, yeah. you could uh, tap into. And, of course, uh, I'm just curious, like with this cartoon about Guy in the Desert, mm-hmm. uh, uh, what prompted that? Were you out in the desert somewhere? Uh, no. <laughs> I have a friend who's uh, kind of snobbish, and he only eats gluten-free food. Oh, oh I see. <laughs> so we were poking fun at him and yeah. bringing up hypotheticals, like what if you were in the middle of the desert and the uh, only food you could find wasn't gluten-free? <laughs> <laughs> you were starving. So I turned that into a comic. I thought that was really funny. Well, well, that's great. Uh, uh, how long uh, you see something does it take before... It gets to to be a cartoon. Um, how long does it take to draw it, or how long to how develop long the idea? De- de- develop the idea. Um, usually, right when I get inspiration, the idea develops in my mind pretty quickly. But I have to write it down almost right away because I might forget it. Uh huh. Well, you know, uh, when I was uh, your age. Uh, I, I, I always sort of resented when people said to me, when well, I was your age, here I'm doing what I... <laughs> but anyway, when I was your age, I'll never forget, I, uh, in high school, I, uh, I enjoyed speaking and what have you. Uh, so we, uh, I started uh, a speaking group uh, where we uh, made a contest out of it. Have you considered maybe doing that uh, in school and getting other carto- budding cartoonists, that might be a, a um, track. <laughs> yeah, maybe something like that. Uh-huh. That would be really interesting. Sure, right, right. I started a speaking group in high school, too, but the only people who joined were mimes. <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't go very far. Unsuccessful speaking group. That's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you could mime that. You could draw a cartoon yeah. <laughs> out of that. Well, you know, if you're gifted in cartooning, I can see application that there are a lot of books that you just add that uh, special uh, uh, flavor. And uh, as far as uh, today is concerned, uh, I realize there is not a favorite uh, cartoonist, uh, but is there sort of a father of cartooning that you know who started the process? <laughs> um, gee, I'm not sure uh, yeah. about the entire history of it. Uh-huh. I have my favorite cartoonists that, you know, some are alive, some are dead. Uh-huh. Um, I'm not sure if there's one specific person who's known as the father of cartooning, uh-huh. but there's definitely a, um, a lot of individual famous cartoonists that I really admire. Charles Schultz is probably oh, known yeah. as he, one he of the fathers. Be, that would probably be the closest. He, he, he would probably be... Of peanuts. Uh, the, uh, peanuts, right. Right, right. now uh, maybe we can, uh, mm-hmm. as it stands uh, out, uh, how do you like this? You're supposed to ask me... What's the what's made you like Engelbaum the best salesman that ever lived? Go ahead, ask me that. Would you? What makes you the best salesman that ever lived, Ike? You mentioned peanuts, and correct me if I'm wrong. Ah. Right here, here, right. Look on, at that. Right you got a jar table. of peanuts right there. <laughs> well, wait a minute. I'm not yeah. getting enough credit here because I saw the jar of peanuts, and that's why I said All right, that. Okay. Oh. <laughs> All right, and there's a prize. Here is a jar of peanuts for you, Ike. Wow. Whoa. Oh, they're dry roasted. <laughs> oh, they're good. Yeah. All Just right. add a little water, and, and they're good. And it's gluten free. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, we run out. 
out of time. And if you want to hang around for the next segment, you're welcome to. But I got to leave this segment with my favorite thought, which is yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift. And that's why we call it the present. Please enjoy your present by looking and living life with a right side of aging. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Network Radio Show. Our mission is to interview successful entrepreneurs who are willing to share with us their ideas and experiences, both the successes and the failures. Because as it has been jokingly said, you should learn from the mistakes of others because you'll never live long enough to make them all yourself. My name is Ike Engelbaum. And I'm the founder of the Entrepreneurs Network of Michigan, which is a group of motivated people that are all interested in helping each other and achieving our personal and professional goals. Please check out our website, entrepreneursnetworkofmichigan.com, for meeting schedule as well as self-improvement material. Our philosophy is that if it's to be, it's up to me. House Calls on Wheels has a great idea on how you can help your loved ones stay comfortable, independent, safe, and right at home by converting your attached garage or retrofitting your home to a customized home health care suite. Call 888-489-8980. The health care suite is a customized floor plan which quickly and easily converts your garage or modifies any room inside your home into a comfortable living area in less than 90 days. If you'd like, the unit has its own heating, air conditioning, and plumbing system, even a private bathroom, and all of this for less than a year's stay in a nursing home. And we have a budget plan so that we can work within your budget. Call 888-489-8980. We even have a free video that you can see. Call 888-489-8980 and find out about the health care suite now. Do you know someone who needs to see a dentist but is homebound? Dr. Mansour's Portable Dental Services provides dental treatment in the comfort of a person's home. Portable Dental Services administers all aspects of dental care. To make an appointment, call 586-873-5567. That's Portable Dental Services, 586-873-5567. Portable Dental Services, making smiles at home. And hopefully you can make smiles all over the place, including tomorrow morning and every Thursday morning from 9.15 to 10.30. You can smile with the Entrepreneurs Network of Michigan bunch or team, depending on how sophisticated you want to be. As you may know, I founded the Entrepreneurs Network of Michigan about 40 years ago. And uh, we've been meeting in various locations. Now we are and actually different times, too. But we decided that since a lot of entrepreneur and also business professionals like to get their day started, motivated and all, and then go on to whatever their field is, we meet from 9.15 to 10.30 at the Level 1 Bank, 37100 Woodward, southeast corner of Big Beaver and Woodward. That's in Bloomfield Hills. It's free, and we provide you free donuts and coffee, and uh, you have a chance to introduce yourself if you're looking for a business opportunity. And uh, we also have a door prize drawing that uh, if you show up and we draw your card, you will get a 10-minute radio interview on this program, which is a 250 buck value. 
So it's well worth showing up, especially since it's free. <laughs> and you have a chance to meet a lot of entrepreneur people who have ideas. Uh, in fact, uh, there's a woman, young woman, that showed up at our last meeting. And she came up with an idea of uh, developing a similar type concept uh, like McDonald's with the hamburgers of uh, actually either licensing or franchising how you can get into business with your own food truck. Think about it. All you got to do is have the motivation and talent, of course, and uh, you could drive around serving food uh, if you are so inclined. She happens to love cooking, and uh, there are so many restaurants that you could work with that you could advertise on their behalf. That's just one of the ideas that came up. But if you have your own idea, show up tomorrow morning, 9.15, and you'll have a chance to let us, and hopefully from there the whole world know that you exist. That goes from 9.15 to 10.30. At 10.30, we uh, have our after, mix, after his meeting mixer, where we share specific ideas, and if you really want to connect with people, that's the place to go. The Level 1 Bank, southeast corner of Big Beaver and Woodward. It's fun, and you get a chance to meet a lot of people. We have a speaker many times that gives you some tips. And one of the tips that uh, we've had uh, that really has taken traction is that in order for you to be successful in the entrepreneurial world, the people have to know you. And the truth of it is that uh, there are three words that I want you to write down if need be, and they're worthwhile repeating. To be successful, it's called the TILT formula, K-L-T. People have to know you, they have to like you, and they have to trust you. So if the first step is getting to know you, then why don't you write a book, possibly? That way people can get to know you. In studio with me is Larry Lawrence, who is a retired radiologist, but more so, he wrote a book, comedic book, it's comedic, C-O-M-E-D-I-C. -E I spell sometimes better. It's titled Pizza with Everything, and uh, there are drawings in there, and speaking of drawings, uh, he uh, uh, brought his grandson along, Eitan uh, Scher, who's a cartoonist. Is that right, Eitan? Yeah. <laughs> That's great. And Larry, you've been around the block, so to speak, <laughs> with a lot I, of different people. <laughs> I, I have. As we mentioned, I worked with Dick uh, Purton for uh, 43 years. Uh -huh. And uh, between that and my full-time radiology job, I uh -huh. didn't have a lot of spare time to, to write other things. <laughs> so when I retired, one thing I did was, uh, from radiology, one thing I did was uh, write this book. Uh -huh. And uh, it was based on an actual incident that happened, I'm embarrassed to say, about 40 years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. I was in a restaurant with uh, Dick Purton and his wife. It was a pizzeria. And um, Dick ordered a pizza, and the waiter and the owner knew who he was, of course. So uh, he said, how do you want your pizza? He said, well, just everything. Put everything on it. <laughs> so uh, about 20 minutes later, the pizza comes out. And it, it was pizza with everything, including an old shoe, a tin can, <laughs> you know, a pair of sunglasses. You know, everything was on this pizza, whatever the, whatever the owner found. And, and uh, we, we had a good time with that. But I, I remember that. And then not that long ago, my friend, Dr. Jeff London, who's also, he's, he's a very creative writer and a funny guy. And uh, he wrote a book called The Animal's Great Football Game. And um, he, he actually went ahead and did it, you know. And I thought, well, you know what I've been thinking for many, many years about wouldn't the pizza with everything make a great book? Mm -hmm. But it took my friend actually writing his book for me to say, you know what, I, you know, I'll just right. do this. Right. So I got some, some hints from him, mm -hmm. including uh, his, the illustrator that he had, uh, Howard Fritzen. And uh, I wrote wrote this book and had Howard illustrate it and uh, it was a lot of fun to do um, and uh, 
you know, we've been uh, having fun with it. Uh, yeah, well, uh, it's a great uh, book to have around. The, the uh, uh, pictures, the uh, cartoons uh, uh, sort of jump out at you. Uh, and the uh, nice thing ab about it is, is that uh, you can look at it time and time again or turn to any particular page and you have it uh, uh, readily available to initiate more uh, conversation on it. And uh, Eitan, uh, we talked uh, earlier about you get inspired with an idea and suddenly you put, what is it, you, uh, you, write, uh, you write the idea out and then you put it into picture form? Is that how that works? Yeah, that's usually how it works. Mm -hmm. I'll write out um, all the dialogue and everything and then I'll um, just work it into the strip. And it must be very satisfying that after you've completed, hey, this is uh, what I want to do, is that right? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. It's great to see my own finished work. Uh -huh. I see. Well, you know, uh, uh, with all the technology uh, that's out there, there might be a way to, uh, since the newspapers are not around as, as much as they used to be, that you would have the you have a whole new world to work with, and especially right. now, I would imagine uh, the limited amount I know about technology is that if you goof up in drawing with the technology, you can correct it immediately, right? <laughs> yeah, I use my computer to edit all my comics. Ah, um, if there's a little mistake I make, I can um, fix that really easily. Ah, it's very it. helpful. Uh, well, that's great. And uh, Larry, I just uh, wondered, since You've been down the road of putting a book together. Can you uh, give some tips as to, let's say, there's someone there, hey, you know, I, I would like to write my own book. What would you suggest as first step? Well, uh, first thing is have a, a, a coherent idea of exactly what you want to have happen because there's a lot of miscellaneous ideas that enter your head when you're writing a book. I mean, this is a a children's book you know, with mm -hmm. illustrations, but still there's all sorts of places you can go. I, I cannot tell you how many times I revised this book mm -hmm. up until the time, you know, the uh, the printer finally said, are you sure, this is what <laughs> <laughs> you sure this is what you want? I mean, I would, I would literally change little words and, and a comma and everything else, uh, but have a, a good idea of where you want to go and, and kind of take away all the extraneous things, you know. Wouldn't it be funny if, or how yeah. about that? Though, yeah, you know, yes. give second thought to those. I mean, d you know, the first thought should be a, a direct route from beginning to middle to end. Right. And, and then uh, actually actually do it. But it's easier said than done. I mean, if you self-publish, uh, you have to hire an artist, if you're not an artist yourself, and a printer, if you're not well-versed in that. I, I, I had a local printer initially. And then uh, I did it through Amazon, which is a really good source, and that's mm -hmm. good for uh, for advertising your book, for selling your book, and for help with various things. It's called Create Space, ah. and uh, it's yeah, all it's always good to have an an agent and a mm -hmm. publisher, and that takes a lot of work mm -hmm. uh, to to find them because there's uh, thousands of of these people. Um, it's just uh, it's a lot of work, and uh, you just have to be dedicated. Almost for it to be a big success, you almost have to be obsessed with selling the book mm -hmm. for it for it to be a a, a success. Right, right. Now uh, be focused. It's a, it's a matter of focusing, and also probably doesn't hurt uh, to uh, hear from uh, other writers as to what they've gone through. Right. Some people join groups. I'm I'm not a joiner by nature, uh, uh, <laughs> so I haven't uh, joined any groups. Uh, <laughs> so start your own but group. <laughs> yeah, that's right. With, with, with that's what I've done. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but you know, people talk about joining uh, writing groups and uh, you know promoting. I, I've taken the book to libraries. I I, I uh, spoke at the JCC Jewish Community Center. Um, I. I dropped off copies, uh, and I, you know, people that seemed to be somewhat successful at various uh, bookstores. I was in a, a bookstore in Hawaii, in Kauai, mm -hmm. and it's billed as the westernmost bookstore in the United States. Oh wow! <laughs> okay. So I, I went in and I pointed 
to the west of the side of the store, and I said, I'm going to open a bookstore right there. <laughs> You're going to have to change <laughs> right, your name. Right. I mean, I still love going to libraries and to bookstores because uh, somehow, uh, I don't know, maybe, of course, uh, everyone is different. I just feel there's sort of like a spiritual thing that oh, occurs absolutely. when you're walking through. And that's another tip that people uh, might uh, appreciate uh, is the fact that you can just walk down the aisles and, and if you see it graphically, sure, you can log on and surf, but it's not the same. You see a physical book with a title, and especially someone uh, as uh, talented as your grandson, Eitan mm -hmm. Sher, he sees a title, and that may prompt a cartoon. Sure, one word. Uh, one, word one word. But speaking uh, of Eitan, I just uh, want to add that he's uh, starting to learn to drive, and I've cautioned him <laughs> that drawing and driving is not a good idea. No, if you're drawing, don't drive. If you're driving, don't draw. So not at the same time, advice. that's for that's sure. That's right. It's good advice. <laughs> uh, since we are talking about bookstores, I'm reminded of uh, the uh, fellow that walks into the bookstore and he asks the clerk, do you have a section in the library where the books are about young, attractive women chasing older men. <laughs> and the clerk says, try the fiction section. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back with more stuff. Don't you go away. <laughs> If you're one of those folks who needs a helping hand, like somebody to provide transportation or grocery shopping or help you pay your bills, run your errands, laundry pickup and delivery, maybe somebody to help you with bathing and grooming or in-home haircutting and styling, you can't get out and you need medical help, maybe a doctor, a dentist, a nurse, a podiatrist, you name it, or prescription delivery, house calls on wheels is the answer. They provide both non-medical and medical services in your home. The non-medical services start as low as $10 an hour if you're using any of the medical services. And all of the medical services are covered by Medicare and most private insurance plans. Call House Calls on Wheels for further information. It's a toll-free number, 1-888-489-8980. That's House Calls on Wheels, one 888-489-8980. Do you know someone who needs to see a dentist but is homebound? Dr. Mansour's Portable Dental Services provides dental treatment in the comfort of a person's home. Portable Dental Services administers all aspects of dental care. To make an appointment, call 586-873-5567. That's Portable Dental Services, 586 586- 873-5567. Portable Dental Services. Making smiles at home. And we're back and in studio is Larry Lawrence, who uh, is a former and still sort of dabbles along in the radio biz, so to speak. Uh, you, uh, Larry, are involved. Uh, Larry Lawrence Lassen, I should say. You're... Uh, Actually, still working with Dick Purton uh, on the Salvation Army Day? Well, he does the Salvation Army Radiothon, uh -huh. and uh, I participate in that. Uh, but mostly I've been working with uh, Big Al, uh, mm -hmm. filling in for Mitch Album. Yeah, right. Well, uh, Big Al, uh, as I understand, it, is involved uh, with the uh, movement for veterans. To, Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. He, he, the creative, really. Uh, multi-talented guy of course he, he's obviously a, a, almost a stand-up well he is a stand-up comedian oh yeah oh yeah he's brilliant <laughs> and uh, it's amazing how much you can get done with humor and uh, your grandson is into cartooning as well and he's got a great sense of uh, humor as well and he's made it into art form and 
since you're the grandfather and you're the grandson, you can collaborate on that upcoming book, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, he's a tough negotiator, my grandson, <laughs> so we're, we're working on a book deal. <laughs> I see. I see. Well, <laughs> you can, call, you can yeah. call him an attorney. There's see, one I, right in the building. <laughs> that's <here. laughs> right. Well, I, I have some cartoon <laughs> ideas, but I cannot even draw stick figures. <laughs> I mean, that, I'm yeah. terrible at that. Right, right. So uh, he's illustrated a few, and it's yeah. very exciting, like right. you said, to see your ideas. Right. I mean, I don't. Aton did the artwork, but uh, it's so cool to see an idea come to life. It's it's very cool. And the beautiful part about it is, is uh, that in uh, many cases, uh, the cartoon itself does not really need that much verbiage. So it could be sort of like a universal line of uh, communication. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you draw it. And uh, as far as uh, your experience, uh, Larry Lawson, has been, uh, you said uh, before that it's not exactly something you do overnight. How, if someone wants to write a book, how much time do you think they should devote as far as from the inception there, does it depend on the individual talent? Uh, yeah, sometimes it, it, it comes very quickly. This particular book, actually writing the, the words of this book beginning to end in, initially, okay, not the mm, rewrites right. initially, was something like a couple of hours. I mean, it's mm. a short book. It's a kid's book, but it was right. a real, it was like writing a poem. Right. But it, it was probably about eight months till it got to its final form. Mm. So uh, it it just depends on the style. You cannot write any serious book in you know in a couple of hours. Uh, but this was more like in a, in a, an extended poem. In fact, I you want me to read a couple of pages. Sure. Just to okay. Give you an idea. Yeah. yeah all right. So it gets to the point where they order the pizza comes and it had everything. So the pizza had cheese of four types assorted with meatballs and onions, just like they ordered. It even had peppers, two red and two green, but also a keychain and a pair of blue jeans. <laughs> An anchor, too, a purple ping pong paddle, a cell phone, a doorknob, and a map of Seattle. <laughs> a big ball of yarn, bongo drums, and a clock, not to mention a football and an argyle sock. A squeezed tube of toothpaste, a flashlight and flute, a hat, scarf, and gloves, and some spare change to boot. <laughs> so this gives you an idea of... So uh, you can uh, combine poetry and... Uh, well, you know, uh, I uh, don't want to oversimplify, but in hearing you speak, I know quite a few libraries uh, are actually having uh, adult coloring book sessions. Oh, okay. So which would be interesting that if you uh, have got this desire like you have, uh, Larry, and Etan as well, uh, maybe you could consider making it into a coloring book type format and get people involved. There's an idea to combine right, both. They're, yeah. they're right. And the message can be done uh, in a, a humorous type way and you can connect with audiences. And since uh, the show is titled Entrepreneurship, I'm always on the lookout for ways how do you get yourself in, the, in front of the people that you're trying to ma build business relationships with. If you can do it in a humorous way, it's the fastest, really, connection that can Humor be. Humor helps quite a bit. Oh, yeah. In fact, uh, uh, the uh, and it's amazing, and I'm a strong believer in the power of humor if it's, if it's used the right way. Uh, I've been involved over the years as, as a pharmacist, and uh, when it came to the sticky part where you're trying to buy or sell a drugstore and uh, uh, the conversation gets sort of thick and heavy, uh, I cannot tell you how many times suddenly, because someone had said something, I throw out a one-liner mm -hmm. and it suddenly takes away all of that sting. Right, <laughs> right. It cuts, cuts through the stiffness yeah, there. Yeah, anyway, I've been thinking about it that way. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's an Ikeism yet, but uh, how about uh, humor is serious business? Ah, what? <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I don't know if you know Dennis Prager, but he's written a book. <laughs> I've heard the name. <laughs> he, is that, he, is a, that the name of the book? It's a, a very... I hope not, because <laughs> I thought I just made that up. Well, you no, no, you never know. But I mean, uh, it's very similar in thought okay. about the whole aspect uh, of humor. And of course, uh, 
you can apply that type of talent to almost every setting. And we were talking off the air, uh, Eitan, uh, perhaps you can do some cartooning for uh, houses of faith, churches, synagogues, you take yeah. from the biblical characters. Definitely. <laughs> Something like that would be really fun. <laughs> right. Well, you know, it's ironic. My biblical name, uh, Ike is my nickname, Isaac is my legal name, and Isaac from the Bible stands for laughter. <laughs> oh, okay, I didn't know that. Yitzchak. <laughs> yeah, right, Yitzchak, right. <laughs> and the history has it, or the states that uh, Sarah was told by God that she was pregnant at 95, and she started to laugh, hence they named it that. So I owe my name to laughter, so I got to keep up the tradition. <laughs> 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 and, uh, you know, uh, I would imagine even uh, someone who is in business and is serious, uh, it must be a form of re relaxation as well to be able to draw and mm -hmm. write about something uh, funny. Have you, uh, Etan, ever uh, used cartooning as a way when the teachers are giving you a hard time or a buddy and then, hey, maybe I start drawing a cartoon and it takes away the the slings and arrows has that happened to you um <laughs> yeah well i've been caught drawing a lot in class that's been a, you know a problem before uh, and maybe turning in a report or something with drawings all over the margins right which well, is, you know doodling during class yeah well doodling uh, is actually in fact i've read it in some of the business books it is a way of really uh Mm -hmm. sort of expanding on your thinking process. So it's yeah. amazing how many simple things that are fun ways of really uh, connecting with your thoughts and also your emotions. It's, it's almost a form of music, except the, you know, without an instrument. <laughs> right, right. A lot of successful people doodled when they were younger. Like right. um, Matt Groening, the creator of The Simpsons, he doodled mm -hmm. a lot during class, and he got caught a lot. In oh. trouble. Yeah, <laughs> so that's like something I can relate to. Yes, right. <laughs> well, you uh, are, are in the perfect spot there, uh, Etan. Uh, you play the guitar and you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you can do that. That'd be uh, uh, terrific. I uh, used to play uh, the clarinet and. Uh, and the truth of it is, is that it's like everything else. If unless you keep on doing it, uh, it, it sort of gets away from you. But it's true. But the cartooning and uh, and with your grandfather being able to write, who knows what's in store? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> so then, uh, as far as uh, your uh, schooling is concerned, uh, are you taking any art classes or anything? Uh, um, yeah, I took a drawing class last year. Um, mm -hmm. It was all right. There mm -hmm. wasn't a lot of, like, you know, freedom to draw whatever you wanted like that, so I didn't really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe I'll go to, like, an art school for college. I don't know. Right. Well, listen, uh, you're, you're a young man, so you got a lot of chances to try uh, different type mm -hmm. things, and maybe, uh, like I say, uh, uh, if you can always start your own group and uh, right. something as simple as that, you could be helping a lot of people express their thoughts and uh, do it in a uh, fun type way. And maybe you can come up with uh, sort of a uh, follow up on p uh, with pizza with everything. Uh, how about yeah, you could do a sequel. A, se a sequel, mm -hmm. <laughs> like a spin off. Pizza with nothing. Pizza with nothing. There you yeah. go. The ultimate gluten free. <laughs> yeah. Gluten free. The, the, the ultimate worst. gluten free. But the worst what? The worst sequel ever. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, we can call it that. The worst sequel ever. <laughs> it's amazing if you let the mind go. Oh yeah. As to what you could have done, and unfortunately, besides letting the mind go, our time has gone by, and it's been a delight to have both of you on the air and exploring the mind, so to speak. Right now, I only have enough time with my favorite parting thought for the Entrepreneur's Network, which is, if you really want to get anything done in life, you'll find a way. And if you don't, you'll find an excuse. And there is no excuse for not achieving your dreams and goals in America. 
because it is the greatest country in the whole world. Remember, a goal is just a dream with a deadline. WNZK has available a few good hours of airtime for a few good programs to serve their communities. Radio is better than ever in targeting an audience that listens to what you say. Learn more about this exciting radio broadcasting opportunity by calling WNZK Radio at 248-557-3500. This is WNZK. Dearborn Heights, Detroit, your ethnic superstation at 690 days, 680 nights.